Hey guys, Chris here. In this video we'll be drawing a portrait using compressed charcoal and laid drawing paper, in this case Fabriano. The advantage of laid paper over standard paper like cartridge is that it has a tooth allowing the artist to have more control over the charcoal. I use compressed charcoal over say standard charcoal like willow because of the fact that it's compressed you can sharpen it to a fine point and be much more precise with your mark making. I always start with my top bottom side and side. This defines the top of the portrait, the bottom of the chin, the left hand side of the portrait and the back of the head. Quick indication for the connection to the neck. This is really important to make sure the neck doesn't get too wide or too narrow. You want to try and get as much information down with as fewer lines so anything that needs to be fundamentally changed can be changed early on. Before I worry too much about features or anything inside of the portrait, I mass in the entire hair mass because it's a really big shape and it's easy to block it all in and you're left with a smaller area to deal with later on. Again just refining the bigger shapes, still not worried about any small information. Finding the ears is really useful in plotting in the features because you can use that as a reference point. I'm finding where the bottom of the ear is in relation to the chin. So here I'm placing in a line for the top of the eyes, or the eyebrows, a line for the bottom of the eyes, a line for the bottom of the nose, and a line for the middle of the mouth. And this is really simple, because if they're in the wrong place, all you have to do is move that line up or down. Refining the back of the neck, and quickly defining where the jaw is. And you can already see the portrait features starting to take place. Quickly marked out the top of the top lip and the bottom of the bottom lip. Just making any last adjustments to the big shape of the hair and starting to plot how the jumper wraps over the back of the neck. And my first shadow shape I normally put in is the shadow shape for the jaw slash neck connection. As that's really the big shape which helps define the structure. Starting to find a bit more refined information along the silhouette of the portrait. So we're placing two boxes for the eyes. I'm indicating the placement for each. It's really easy in an eye to make it too big, too small, too far to the left, too far to the right. But if you indicate an individual box for each, it means that you shouldn't ever have to make any fundamental changes later on. So you can treat it that simple at the beginning. You can get these big proportions locked in. Here I'm just indicating where the individual eye sits on the right. Before I move on after I just quickly check how the eyes are relating to the hair. At this stage it's still not essential that it looks like the person we're drawing. This is purely placement. first thing I like to do when I go into my shadow is I add a tone over the whole drawing. This is because if you're using the paper as the highest light, that means that everything else has to be slightly darker. So it's easier just to mass in a tone straight away. And next what I start to do is mass in one value for my darks. I start with the easiest dark, which is going to be the hair. I'm not worried about individual values in the hair, finding individual hairs, almost like you're drawing Lego hair, and you're just going to mass it all in. And same with the shadow under the neck. And you see, as you do that, you start to give a good sense of it being in mass. Here I'm using a stump, which is just to push the charcoal into the tooth of the paper. It just means that the charcoal isn't sitting on top and is easier to control. 
and it gives it a nice even tone. Here now I'm finding the eyebrow because that allows us to judge the distance between or the size of the forehead. So I'm always trying to do my easy stuff first. Always simplify your problems. Never make them harder than they have to be. So I'm just checking all my alignments, how the mouth relates to the eyes, check the corners, see where they sit. You always want to be relating one side of the drawing to the other. You don't want to end up with a mouth that works really well, but it's too low. So here I'm placing inside of the box for the eye, I'm placing the box for the actual eye shape. Again, not drawing it at the moment, just constantly working around the whole image. bottom of the nose just helps me judge the distance between the top lip so you want to make sure that when a portrait is in three quarters the side that's turning away from us doesn't get too big or too small so the gap between in this case the nose and the cheek is really important you'll see me go back to that again and again Here I'm defining the top eyelid. I use the lights of the eye to help me find the shape of the iris. So I'm not just drawing the positive shape, in this case the darks of the eyes, but also the light. I try and keep it really simple at this stage, because it might be that I have to rub it out and move it so I don't want to commit to anything. Here again, finding the top of the eyelid and the darks of the eye. You want to try and get this placement in as quickly as possible to check your alignment.
now working on the shadow shapes on the nose. It's really tempting when drawing shapes to try and draw what you think there is, but draw exactly what you see. So I'm not worried about it looking like a nose, I know if I draw it as I see it, it will become a nose. All of my values at this time I'm simplifying down just into one. I'm not finding any difference in values, I'm just finding lights and darks. I'm never stopping on one feature for too long either. I don't want to be too invested in an area that I can't take it out and redo it if I have to. And you can already start to see, even in these simple stages or beginning stages, features and persons starting to emerge. And very, very simple beginnings. If you remember, we just essentially had five, six lines. So here I'm defining the valley for the mouth, or the shape for the mouth. I'm adding in a really light tone for the mouth here. It's very easy to make the mouth appear too flat by making it too dark and making the edges too hard. As you can see, keeping it really soft. I'm doing here is just softening the edge between the jaw and the cheek because the cheek above the shadow shape on the jaw is turning away from us so it's going to be slightly darker. Here I'm just knocking down the value in the hair. Every time you go back over an area that's got charcoal on top of it, it knocks it down by half a value each time. So you're slowly building up the darks. And again, I'm always making small adjustments where I see it. The more and more you work into a drawing, the more reference points you have. So something that didn't look wrong at beforehand, five, 10 minutes later, can then start to jump out. So drawing is never a linear process. You're never going from A to B to C to D all the way to the end. You're jumping around the place. Trying to show roughly where the lights in the hair are to give a sense of volume. But I'm not worried about it at the moment. Now I'm slowly turning the form of the neck. It's a cylinder, so it's going to be darker on either side for the sense of form. Thinking in really basic shapes. I'm always thinking basic shapes and building 
smaller and smaller, still basic shapes on top of each other. So you can think of the head as an egg on a cylinder. And if you can think of it like that, you can understand how the big forms turn in space. So the entire left side of the face is going to be slightly darker, or it's turning away from us. And if we don't find that value, it's always going to look flat. And just being really careful though not to make it too dark, it's quite a flat lit portrait. The stronger lit a portrait is, it tends to be easier, because you've got more distinct value changes. Here I'm just working around the whole portrait again. And just slowly knocking down the values on the left hand side. It's very easy to scar this type of paper, so you don't want to be too rash with how you apply charcoal. The stump is great for just softening out any edges that you put in. You'll often see me put in a shape and then soften it like there. Things never have as hard an edge as you imagine them in real life. Here I'm just finding the turn of the side of the head we know it's slightly darker on the cheek. And you can start to see the head take shape. Again, I'm always relating back to my big shadow shapes, making sure they're still working. In this case, that's obviously the hair and the shadow underneath the jaw. Don't be tempted to get stuck in one area. Don't spend hours just working on one eye. each pass on that side of the cheek, just making it slightly darker so we can understand where the light is hitting the portrait. I 
want to make sure as well that the edges between the hair and the head doesn't get too hard. The edges are very soft. You don't want to make it look like someone's hair has been sharpied on. Now I can start afford to spend a little bit more time on the eyes. Happy that all the big proportions are working. I want to try and get the sense of the nose being in front of the cheek on the left as well. So I have to do this by knocking down the value on the cheek to make the nose start to stand out in front of it. Yeah, I'm just working on the information in the eye in the dark. I don't want to bring it out too much, so I'll say too much because I want that to be turning away from us. Here yeah, I'm just trying to define her cheekbones a little bit more. Not overdefined, and especially the small dark on the nose. Change of value is only maybe a half, probably less. Constantly comparing it to the darkest darks. Which in this case, is probably the eyes or the hair. I never like to finish one area first and move on to the other. I find that if you build up a drawing together, it has a stronger sense of life.
you want to be careful that you don't make the whites of the eye white. They're not actually white. They're quite dark. Only a bit lighter than the skin tone around them. So here I'm using the kneaded eraser to start to pull out some of the lights. This gives me a sense of my whole tonal range. And you can also now see how the nose really starts to jump out. So you see I'm often adding, taking away, adding, taking away. You never know if something works until you try it. If it doesn't work, take it off. Try a different way. Just going in with a needed eraser, adding the small highlight in the eye, just to see how we're getting along. It's one of those things I normally add in, then I'll take away straight away. That's the final thing you want to do. It gives me a good sense of going in the right direction. Always being careful not to leave strong hard edges where they shouldn't be. It's a very good way of making something look cartoony or flat. Not that there's anything wrong with cartoons, but not the objective here. So again, just putting it in, seeing if I'm getting close. I'm adding in some of the darks above the upper lid. This is really easy to make too hard an edge. Remember, it's very soft. It's just simply the eyelid turning in on itself when the eye is open. He 
You don't want that line to be competing with the shape for the upper lid itself. So much so that I tend to underplay it, even if I see it quite strongly. Just using the stump to keep that area of the eye really soft, making those small tiny changes, especially within the eye. Any tiny change can make a huge amount of difference. So every time, lean back, step back, see how it looks. Pretty much got to the value on the cheek that I was looking for and slowly built up the charcoal. We get a really nice soft transition effect. So when I'm trying to move shapes around and I don't want to use an eraser because I don't want to take the value back to white, I often use a stump and just push the shapes that way. That way you still got charcoal on that area, but you can move the shape around. Just tidying up now going around the portrait. I've just realised as well that the neck was actually still slightly too wide. So even at this stage, if I see something that's wrong, remember this was one of the first lines that we did, I'd always go back and change it. Really nice soft highlight just underneath her eye in the shadow. 
that can be done using the eraser but then with an either charcoal on my finger or the drawing stump I can just add a small amount back so the nose is still standing out in relation. So now working in the shadows in the ear, I don't really worry about defining them too much because it's out of focus. The focus in this drawing is our eyes, as with most portraits. So I keep it fairly loose and impressionistic, and that way it captures the idea that we're not focused on that area. And actually, it creates a slightly more realistic drawing. So now I'm taking a, a minute just to see how it's all coming together. The final few stages before I put on the highlights. It's important to step away and see how it's looking. Don't get trapped at the easel. I just felt her cheekbones could have been defined a little bit more. A uh, small highlight in the eye to help bring it all together. And here, going in with the needed er eraser, using it as my whites is to pick out some of the highlights on the hair. It's really something that's one of the last few marks you're making.
Now really I'm just playing with some of the few final marks. Seeing as anything that I want to accent, take away, add. And here's the finished drawing. You can see there's been a few variations in it. I often finish a drawing in a session, turn it around, move away from it, come back a few hours later with a fresh eye. So a few things then I can decide to bring together. Normally at this stage, you're taking away information and unifying information again that you got carried away with. But here what I did actually is just found a value for the jumper, just to give a nicer frame for the portrait. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this little walkthrough, and all the best, and I hope to see you again soon.